UFC Vegas 71. These are the full card predictions and the betting breakdown. Main event, Piotr Jan fights Marab Divashvili. We got a fun card in store. Make sure you guys smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Turn those post notifications on and make sure to share the video as well. Also, guys, note fight companion for the entire card. Make sure you guys tune into that on Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern time start. And let's get into our first fight of the night. Cedric Dumas versus Josh Froome. The pick is going to be Cedric Dumas in this fight. Listen, I think he can outstrike Josh Froome. And I think he's going to have a big advantage in the grappling. Definitely the physically stronger fighter. The cleaner striker. Josh Froome, to me, is a little bit slow and sloppy on the feet. He's a tough guy that comes to scrap. But he's super hittable to me. I think he's getting touched up on the feet by Dumas, and then Dumas is probably going to take him down and bully him. Sean Gore beat Josh Froome in the last one. Cedric Dumas is a guy that I think is a problem with his frame for Froome. Yes, Froome the tall guy, 6'4", 76 and a half inch reach. You got the big reach edge towards Dumas, the athleticism advantage, the power advantage, the grappling advantage. I'm picking Dumas to win by submission. I really don't see this as a very competitive fight. I'm thinking first or second round submission. The reach advantage for Dumas gives him a striking edge with the speed too. Froome is too slow. And honestly, getting submitted by Trayshawn Gore, whose majority of his game just built upon striking, not a good look. Dumas runs him over. As far as the odds for this matchup, it's actually close money. Minus 135, Cedric Dumas. Josh Froome, plus 130. I got Dumas all day. I think these odds are way too close. When I looked at this fight, I was thinking it's going to be minus 200, minus 250. It's close. It's near even money. Cedric Dumas, high confidence pick to run over Josh Froome. He's going to make it look easy. He's an exciting prospect. I know he's trying to charge $100 for interviews or something like that on like lower level YouTube channels. Hey, he's trying to cash and get the money. I'll tell you this. If you bet on him this weekend, you're going to be cashing too. Let's keep running. Next fight of the night. Rafael Asuncao versus Davey Grant. I got to pick the Davy Grant side. I think the kickboxing is going to be too much for a Sun Tso at this point, especially with him not, in my opinion, going to have a like, major grappling advantage. I do think if you put them both on the floor and just do grappling, a Sun Tso has the better jujitsu. But as far as getting it there, controlling on top, and keeping Grant down for three rounds, that's not what I see. I see a lot of stand-up here. I like Davy Grant's kickboxing. He's a scrappy dude on the feet. He gave Marlon Vera a tough fight, even as a win over Marlon Vera, knockout of Jonathan Martinez, which I feel like is aged well. Adrian Yanez fight is competitive. Davy Grant's dangerous. A Sun Tso just got his first win in a while against Victor Henry, and now they're throwing him a really difficult fight in Davy Grant, who just brings the heat and doesn't break. So obviously the pick is Davy Grant to win. I think on the feet, he lands the more significant strikes, but a Sun Tso will not fall. Cody Garbrandt flatlined them. That's like a super impressive KO win to have for Cody No Love. Grant in this fight, I think is forced into a competitive fight, but lands more. He's got higher volume than a Sun Tso. He's the quicker striker. I think he's the more versatile stand-up fighter and also the more dangerous one. So significant strikes going to be landed by Grant. Grappling defense by Grant should be there. And I see Davy Grant taking a decision. I could see 29-28. Definitely unanimous, though, for Davy Grant getting it done over a Sun Tso. In a fight that's not easy, it's a competitive fight, but a clear win for Davy Grant, I believe. As far as the lines for this fight, Davy Grant is the favorite. He's around minus 155. A Sun Tso at around plus 140. It makes sense Grant's the favorite in this fight. A Sun Tso is 40. He looked really good against Victor Henry. And you know what? Victor Henry's no slouch either. But Davy Grant is game as fuck. He's such a difficult fight for anyone really in the bantamweight division outside of the rankings. A 40-year-old, a Sun Tso, major speed disadvantage. His toughness will keep him in it. But Grant gets the hand raised. Davy Grant for the win. Let's keep running. Next fight on the card. It is Carlston Harris versus Abubakar Nurmagomedov. I'm picking Abubakar Nurmagomedov. Carlston Harris got the soul taken from him against Shafkat Rachmanov. Yes, that loss doesn't look terrible at this point. But he has not fought since then. And how long ago was that? A year ago. It was a bad knockout. He got fucked up in that fight. And I remember the stand-up, right, of Carlston Harris. It's something I think people did fear. But it's sloppy. 
He throws slapping punches. Abubakar is no crispy top tier striker, but he's got technical kickboxing. He keeps that high guard up and he's very concise with his takedown attempts and he's persistent as fuck. The win in the last one, to me, Godzi Omar Godzi of win. That's a good victory to have because he's so dangerous on the floor. I think Nurmago Medov is, you know, maybe one of those Dagestanis that gets slept on a little bit, but he's 17 and three. He's fought in the PFL, and I think he's getting a win here in the UFC over Carlston Harris by a unanimous decision. I'm expecting him to do it with the grappling. Also, note. Nurmagomedov Medov is a southpaw. The way that Harris comes in with sloppy strikes, I see Nurmagomedov Medov landing straight punches on Carlson Harris striking and then finding takedowns. He has a tremendous double leg, a good overhand punch. I think he mixes it up well, takes down Harris, and en route to a unanimous decision win, I'm picking up Ubukar Nurmagomedov Medov over Carlston Harris in this one. Shafkat Rachmanov, the OV, ran over Harris in the last time. We got another OV in this one with Abubakar Nurmagomedov. Medov. He beats him too. Not running him over like Shavkat did, but a win for Abubakar Nurmagomedov. As far as the odds, Abubakar's the underdog. Plus 122. Very interesting. He is dog money. He's on a nice win streak. Harris, minus 135. Yeah, he lost to Shavkat, but he got murdered by Shavkat. And to me, I think Carlston Harris relies on the athletic ability and power in fighting lesser guys. I mean, you look at the UFC win. Christian Aguilera, no longer with the organization. Impa Kasunganai, no longer with the organization. To me, a win over Godzi Omar Godziev, a guy who's a dangerous grappler. If Nurmagomedov can take him down, he's going to be able to get Harris down too. It's going to be Nurmagomedov, unanimous decision in this fight. Let's keep running to the next fight. Oh, this is a really fucking fun one. I like this next fight a lot. Tyson Nam versus Bruno Silva. You know, I think that Bruno Silva is dangerous with his punching power. And Tyson Nam is almost 40 at 125 pounds. I just don't like the look. I think Bruno Silva is going to sleep him. I know Tyson Nam is the knockout artist. But look at the guys he's KOing. Zaruk Adeshev knocks out quick. It's Zaruk Adeshev. He's just a kickboxer. Transition MMA way too late. Knocks out Ode Osborne. The chin of Ode is questionable. His hands are always down. Bruno Silva is a fucking bulldog. He's been out for a while due to some lingering injuries. But he's running through competition that he fought. Yes, lesser competition. Yes, kind of like scrubbish competition if you want to be 100% honest for Bruno Silva. But when you talk about what he does in those fights, he puts his punch combinations together beautifully. He's a very physically strong guy with solid grappling. Tyson Nam is a dangerous and explosive kickboxer, but he is hittable. He can get fucking ripped with shots. I see these guys sitting in there and mixing it up. I think toughness comes into play in this fight. Who's the more tough guy of the two? I think that Bruno Silva does it. He wins it by KO. I'm telling you, I think this is going to be an action-packed fight. This could be the sleeper fight of the night. I could see both guys getting hurt in this one, and then Bruno Silva laying the hammer down, knockout win over Tyson Nam. So I am riding with Bruno Silva. Both guys dangerous on the feet. Yes, Nam maybe technically would be considered the more dangerous striker from what we've seen previously, but Bruno Silva mixes it up well, and I see him finding hooks inside, and I think that Tyson Nam crumbles, and don't doubt Bruno Silva's ground game either. As far as the betting odds for this one, Bruno Silva, if we can find him here, he's sitting at minus 155, and then Tyson Nam at plus 135. I like Bruno Silva's chances to get a KO. I think someone's going to bet in this fight. Under two and a half for sure. And what's going to be a banger flyweight fight. Tyson Nam and Bruno Silva are knockout artists at 125 pounds, which is a rare feat. I can't wait to see these two throw down. Next fight on the card. We're actually going one back because we missed this one. It's Tony Gravely versus Victor Henry. This is a very exciting matchup. I like this fight a lot for Victor Henry. I'm picking him to win here. Tony Gravely gets picked apart a bit from rangier guys. Yes, he's at an advantage, right, of an inch with the reach. But I think the better kickboxer from distance is definitely Victor Henry. Competitive fight against the Sun Sao, he lost. Yes, the grappling was a difference maker. 
Gravely does have some wrestling, but he's not all that effective with it. He gets caught in bad entanglements. He makes a lot of mistakes. Javid Basharat's having success on the ground with him. Victor Henry, I think, wins this fight in a competitive, unanimous decision. Gravely is an athletic striker with some power, but he's not nearly as technical as Henry. I think as far as the wrestling advantage, Gravely, though it's not going to be super consistent, I don't see him chain wrestling Henry for three rounds. He's going to be forced to stand up and strike. And Victor Henry is going to kick the body, touch him with straight shots, and I honestly think gets it done with a convincing, unanimous decision. I think Victor Henry's a good fighter. That win over Hani Barsalos is a huge W to have. He came in the UFC not expected to do anything, and he beats a guy that was thought of as like, the next Jose Aldo. Victor Henry is a bit of a menace, in my opinion. So I like Victor Henry a lot to win in this fight. <coughs> also, so man, I'm having a cough from hell over here. Choking on my own spit. Nate Maynes win. That was a KO. I don't think Victor Henry's going to knock out Tony Gravely, but would it be insane if Victor Henry puts his punches together and knocks him out against the cage? It wouldn't blow my mind. I think Victor Henry's getting it done. I'm going to say unanimous decision. Could be a KO. I think this is a fun fight. I think this card is actually really, really epic. As far as the odds, Victor Henry's a slight favorite around minus 140. Gravely plus 120 as the underdog. I'm picking the Victor Henry side. I got the better technical fighter to beat the more athletic fighter. So we're going Victor Henry for the win. Let's keep running up. Next fight on the card. Mario Batista versus Guido Canetti. Listen. This is a bit of a squash match. We know the way this fight's going to go. It's going to be Mario Batista bullying Guido Canetti. Listen, Guido Canetti has two wins recently against the two worst guys on the roster as far as the bantamweight division is concerned, who is no longer with the UFC. Chris Mutino, TKO. That was really impressive. He did it better than Sean O'Malley did. And then he beats Randy Costa, who's just so inconsistent. Mario Batista is a dangerous grappler. He's got stand-up skills, too. He's very athletic. He's one of those workhorse style of fighters. He doesn't gas. He's going to bring the heat to Guido Canetti. I think he finds himself on top, throwing ground and pound, and then finding a submission. I'm going Mario Batista for the win via submission both guys southpaws too which is going to be interesting to see that striking i think that guido Canetti gets taken down and i even think that mario batista is able to land punches on the feet and look pretty solid i like his game i think batista is a great athlete a solid wrestler like i said workhorse type of fighter he gets to win by submission he's gonna finish the 43 year old come on at 135 at 43 yes it's a fun story but guido Canetti does not have a shot in this fight as far as the odds they are thinking the exact same thing because Mario Batista is at best a minus 770, but he's even upwards of minus 1000 as the favorite. Guido Canetti around plus 660 as the underdog. I'm going with the huge favorite in Mario Batista, and I think he gets the finish. Win by submission for him. Beats the 43-year-old. Come on, 29-43. Very different career trajectories at this point. Fun story for Canetti. Love that he's 43, still scrapping with the young guys, but he's losing this one to Mario Batista. Next fight, J.J. Aldrich versus Adian Lipsky. J.J. Aldrich is going to win. Actually, her loss aged really well. It was the loss against Aaron Blanchfield, which now looks tremendous because she stopped some takedowns. She had some success in the clinch. She was nasty in that fight. Ariane Lipsky got knocked out by Priscilla Cachuera. She's always very inconsistent, queen of violence. So her style is kind of reckless abandon, offensive kickboxing. Whereas you look at Aldrich, this is a girl that beat Jillian Robertson, who's a tremendous grappler. I think that you're going to see J.J. Aldrich have a lot of success in the grappling department. I think she's going to get the win here. And look, ground and pound, ground and pound. This is a weakness, right? Lipsky gets put on her ass, and she's getting TKO'd by Antonina Shevchenko on the ground. J.J. Aldrich, ground and pound KO is what I'm going to ride with. Maybe she locks up a sub, but I think ground and pound KO is more likely. She's going to get on top, and she is going to dominate Ariane Lipsky. Yes. Yes, the striking is dangerous of Lipsky, but inconsistent and a little wild. She's got those crazy flurries as she closes the gap trying to scrap. J.J. Aldrich, Southpaw, I'd say the more safe striker of the two. Decent guard, decent kickboxing, not overly impressive. Where she shines is on the floor and in the grappling, in the, in the clinch. 
She's going to land takedowns against the cage, and she's going to beat up Lipsky. Ground and pound KO, J.J. Aldrich for the win. I think she's getting this thing done. As far as the odds for this matchup, minus 230 for Aldrich makes a lot of sense to me. Ariane Lipsky, plus 210. J.J. Aldrich to win. Confident pick. Big grappling advantage. She is going to expose Lipsky's lack of grappling skills, which we all know. She's not a good grappler. J.J. Aldrich, ground and pound. Let's keep running to the next fight. Next matchup on the card, it brings us to the featured prelim. It's Lucas Breschke versus Carl Williams. Now, the pick is Carl Williams, and I know he is a former light heavyweight, and people may ask, oh, what about the size difference? There really is not one here because Lucas Breschke is one of those heavyweights that could be a light heavyweight if he chose to trim down the body fat a bit. He should have won his UFC debut. Holy shit, he got robbed in that debut. It was against Martin Boudet who just looked atrocious in that fight. I don't know if they had Stevie Wonder judging the fight. I don't know if they were looking at their phones, the judges. It was one of the worst decisions of last year. Maybe the worst decision of the year. Carl Williams on the opposite side. Pretty decent boxing chops. Good straight punches. Like I said, former light heavyweight. Clear speed advantage here. He's also the better wrestler of the two. Light heavyweights do damn well moving up to heavyweight. We saw it with John Jones on Saturday, absolutely dismantling Gone in two minutes. I think Carl Williams is on a land takedowns. He'll control from the top. He is a guy that's more of like a, a decisionator, right? He can get these decisions. Granted, he's got stoppages too. It's not like he can't win by ground and pound TKO, but Breschke's not easy to put away. I don't think Williams has great submissions, and I don't think he's going to just beat the brakes off of Breschke. I think he wins. He'll be winning with the, the clinch control. I think he'll win with some straight punches. I think he'll win a lot of the boxing exchanges. He's got a solid jab. He's got a little bit of a reach edge, but about the same, 6'3 to 6'4. These guys match up really well. Similar weigh-ins for their last fights. I think that Carl Williams is quicker, the better wrestler. He's en route to a unanimous decision win. So I'm picking Carl Williams to get the victory here. And Breschke... He should be after this weekend 1-1 one one in the UFC. Unfortunately, he'll fall to 0-2 because Martin Boudet was gifted the dumbest decision of 2022. As far as the odds, Williams is the favorite at around minus 140. And then Brezhki sitting at around plus 145 as an underdog. I'm picking Carl Williams. Speed is a factor. Wrestling is a factor. His boxing is better. Brezhki is kind of a little bit sloppy too with his boxing skills. He's okay. He's one of those like scrappy heavyweights who's got decent enough kickboxing and he's faster than a lot of these fucking absolute turtle speed heavyweights but that's not what you get with Carl Williams a former light heavyweight Williams gets the win decision let's jump to the main card and it starts off with Nikita Krylov versus Ryan Spann which originally was supposed to be the last UFC Vegas main event fight falls through very late they thankfully rebook it quickly, and I love this match. If I'm picking Nikita Krylov by submission, nothing changes with my prediction other than, oh shit, now we only have three rounds. Well, I was picking Krylov to win in the second round by submission anyways. I think the same thing happens here. I think Ryan Spam might gas himself worse because now he knows he's only got three rounds. He comes out even faster than he did, expected to, I guess rather, when they were supposed to be scheduled for the five-round main event. And I think Nikita Krylov has a lot of success with grappling. He fends off the explosive and big punches by Ryan Spann. I think Krylov gets this thing to the floor and submits a tired Spann. And don't be shocked if Krylov stuns Spann on the feet either. Ryan Spann is a real athlete. He's explosive with big power. I love the Dominic Reyes win. But Nikita Krylov is a consistent performer who's been finished once. By knockout, rather. I guess he did get submitted before, but Ryan Spann's not going to submit him. One KO loss. It was a ground and pound KO against Soa Palele in his UFC debut. Krylov has improved tremendously since then. He's at light heavyweight now. He's given tough fights to the best guys in the weight class. And, I mean, he's got a nice two-fight winning streak going for himself. Absolutely dismantled Gustavsson quickly. Got a nice win over Volkan Uzdemir. Weird loss to Paul Craig in a fight where he chose to engage in grappling. But he is very confident in his ground skills and has a clear advantage in the wrestling department and the jiu-jitsu in this fight here. As far as striking goes, yes, Span is more explosive. But for how long? He's got three, four minutes at best for his crazy explosive power style. Nikita Krylov wins this fight by submission in the second round. Same pick as when they were originally scheduled. And the odds are wider now, though. Krylov is minus 190. Span plus 165. Nikita Krylov to win via submission. 
He's going to probably strangle Ryan Spann on the ground, a tired Ryan Spann. I'm going to say he taps him out in the second round. I could see it late in the first two, but I like second round submission. Win, Krylov, good performance too. And he's a good contender at light heavyweight. He's a consistent fighter, and he's always pushing right towards that top five. Nikita Krylov for the win. He beats the freak athlete Superman Spann. Let's keep running up. Next fight on the card, Hikardo Hamos versus Austin Lingo. You guys ready for this one? I'm picking Austin Lingo. Hikardo Hamos breaks. He breaks, man. He's like a Charles Oliveira light as far as his toughness goes. And I know Oliveira, I'm comparing him to like a, a legendary fighter, but I'm talking about the young Oliveira. Oliveira's always had amazing jiu-jitsu. Hamos has primarily kickboxing. Austin Lingo, I don't even understand how he's this big of an underdog. I'll bring the odds up in a second, but he's a big dog in this fight. He's a dangerous boxer, 9-1 and one as a pro, just beat and broke a good kickboxer in Luis Saldana. Austin Lingo is going to win this fight. I think he's getting a knockout. Second or third round KO. We've seen Hamosh broken in fights before. Nurmagomedov's a name that comes to mind. Saeed beat him by stoppage. You also look, he lost to Lerone Murphy by stoppage. Zabira Tohugov loss now. Looks like shit because Tohugov's out of the UFC after one of the worst performances he could have had. Granted, controversial decision loss, but still a terrible performance, win or lose. I think that Austin Lingo is going to bring the boxing to Hamosh. I think Hamosh is going to be trying to kickbox. Lingo's got the better hands. He hits with more power. I think he'll rip shots to the body and head. He'll be in Hamosh's face, and he will break him and get a stoppage in the second or third round. I'm riding with Austin Lingo to win, and this is going to be a massive upset, and he's completely being slept on by the bookies. Hamosh does not have the toughness. Odds, Hamosh, minus 278, minus 280 for him. Lingo, the plus 280 underdog. I'm riding with the big dog in this one. I think he's getting a KO. He's going to break Hikaru Hamosh and get the win. He outboxes him. I like I like the game for Lingo. And people say, oh, man, he, he lost to Yusuf Zalal. That was three years ago now. Yeah, Lingo hasn't been super active, but he's definitely getting better. And look at his age. He's only 28. Sure, Hamosh is 27 also. But Lingo's boxing is better. He's tough. He's improving. He's going to close that gap and touch up Hamos. Who's the better boxer on the inside? Lingo. From distance, it's not like Hamosh is a sniper. He's got decent kickboxing, but he has stupid fight IQ. He th was throwing at one point this weird, like, reverse behind the leg low kick. Like an oblique kick mixed with a leg kick behind his other leg. Stupid shit like that is going to get him knocked out. Austin Lingo's beating him here. I'm saying KO. I got the scrappy savage in Austin Lingo to get the knockout. He beats Ricardo Hamos in what is a massive upset. And I think Hamos is being very overrated by the bookies. Crazy line. Next fight on the card. Vitor Patrino versus Anton Turkaj. I'm picking Vitor Patrino to knock him out. Turkaj... I know he's, you know, primarily known as a striker at one point, and then he goes on contender series and shows grappling. The win against Dos Santos there was lackluster, not super impressive. He got touched up with punches. He could probably land takedowns on Petrino early and control him a bit, but I don't see him doing it for three rounds, and I don't see the chin holding up because Petrino has serious KO power. He's got a thudding punch. Now, Petrino was built up fighting nobodies until he fought Gazermat Antogulov, and he killed him. Comes on the Contender Series, beats a guy that he had beaten previously in a tougher fight than their first one, but still a W off Contender Series. It was a knockout in the second round uh, against a Hadolfo Balato. Turkaj got killed by Jailton in the last fight. Respect for him taking that fight against a guy that he had no chance or business being across the cage from. Against Petrino, Turkaj can have wrestling moments early, but I think Petrino stops him. I think it could look very similar to the Balato fight with Turkaj having some grappling moments and then getting knocked out on the feet. Second or third round KO, I'm going Vitor Petrino. I got like the powerhouse. I feel like I have to go with the guy that brings the pain throughout the fight. I don't really see Turkaj grinding a decision. I have a hard time seeing him submitting Petrino. I think Petrino eventually finds the kill shot and knocks Turkaj out. A little bit too hittable on the feet. I know he was known as a striker outside the UFC and has some decent stand-up game. He spins sometimes with his attacks. He's going to get caught and knocked out if he tries to strike with Petrino. And even with the grappling, he can't chain wrestle for three rounds and just hold Petrino down. He's getting knocked out. Vitor Petrino to get the win. As far as the odds, Petrino minus 135, close line. I like him by knockout a lot. And then plus 125 for Anton Turkaj. We're going Petrino. We're going KO win. And I think it's a damn impressive one. Fun ass fucking fight though. Let's get to the featured bout of the night. 
Saeed Nurmagomedov versus Jonathan Martinez. Listen, I normally always side with the OV. I'm going with Jonathan Martinez to outkickbox Saeed Nurmagomedov. You look at Martinez's game. He has tremendous slow kicks, very patient with his striking, but so precise. He's got great accuracy, good multi-shot punch combinations, and the low kicks, to me, jump off the page. Fucked up Cub Swanson's leg bad in the last one. You look on the opposite side. Saeed Nurmagomedov is a pretty slick striker. Was losing in his last fight to Sadio Cub Kakramanov, heavy with grappling, finds a submission. He's got dangerous subs. Jonathan Martinez is not looking to wrestle with Saeed. He wants to strike. And I don't see Saeed Nurmagomedov as a serious wrestling threat in this name. In this, fuck it, in this name, in this fight. With the name, you'd think that Saeed Nurmagomedov is just absolutely a menace with the wrestling, but he's not. This is not Team Eagle. This is not Team Habib. This is the dogfighter. Saeed Nurmagomedov. It's a different team, a much more striking, prioritized team. And I think Jonathan Martinez is definitely the more explosive and better kickboxer here. Martinez is also a nasty southpaw too. He can switch up the stances, as can Saeed though. Saeed's definitely comfortable out of both stances. He's slick on the feet, good body kicks, like a sniper body kick. But dude, I think he's in trouble. I think this fight's a bad matchup for him. I think Jonathan Martinez is en route to a win. Watch for low kicks. Watch for punch combinations. I think body hooks could actually be a factor. And I think Saeed Nurmagomedov loses a unanimous decision. Like 29-28, I could see. Jonathan Martinez, my pick to get the win in this one over a tremendous talent in Saeed Nurmagomedov. But Martinez is getting better and better and better each time out. And I really think he's a problem. As far as strikers go at 135, he's so dangerous. Minus 175 for Saeed Nurmagomedov. That's a close line for the OV. Jonathan Martinez, plus 164. This might as well be Pickums, because when you got a Normago Medov, that's not more than a 4-1. to one. That's insane. I'm going with uh, Jonathan Martinez to upset him. I think he does it with the striking, and I just don't really see Martinez putting himself in stupid positions on the ground to get strangled. I think he outstrikes Saeed Normago Medov. Martinez is coming to his own, man. He's nasty as hell. I know he's training also alongside Chris Gutierrez, who has found this flow and just murdered Frankie Edgar. That's a savage training partner to have. Martinez, unanimous decision. He beats Saeed Nurmagomedov, and he's a problem at 135, man. Dangerous striker. Let's get to the co-main event of the evening. Alexander Volkov versus Alexander Romanov. So, you're looking at recent opponents, and you're like, yo, Volkov just beat Tybura, Romanov just lost to Tybura, MMA math, right? Fuck no. Styles make fights. Alexander Romanov is going to win by submission in the first round. Volkov's takedown defense, it, you know what, against Curtis Blades, it looked good, but Curtis Blades has overrated wrestling. He's a good wrestler for sure, but not a great guy shooting takedowns. Romanov picks people up and slams them. Now, I think Alexander Romanov is going to pace himself a bit because the reason he lost to Tibura is because he put a pulverization on him in round one and then gassed and loses the second and third. Granted, that fight was a draw. I don't know who's scoring that fight. First round is a 10-9. That was a 10-8 ass whooping. Alexander Romanov should finish Volkov. I think he submits him here. I think the takedowns are going to be tremendous for him. I think the top control is crazy. Good ground and pound. He finds submissions. Volkov's forced to tap out in the first round. I kind of feel like it could be like a key lock, an Americana, something like that for Romanov because he's going to be so heavy on top of Volkov. I think Romanov's still a problem, even though he lost his last fight. The stock, to me, is not dropping a lot with a loss to Marcin Tibura especially being that it should have been a draw, especially being that in the first round he looked like a killer. We just need a little more patience for Romanov, and stylistic matchups are a huge favor. Tibera is a great grappler. Alexander Volkov is a really solid technical kickboxer, but if you can get him to the ground, Tom Aspinall tapped him easy on the floor. Nothing tells me Romanov doesn't have those finishing abilities on the mat. I'm going Alexander Romanov first round submission and uh, I think the hype train's back with him getting the win. As far as the odds here, Romanov is a slight favorite. Minus 118, it's Pickums. Plus 114 for Volkov. This is a Pickums fight, guys, and it should be a Pickums fight. Don't be swayed by MMA math. Styles make the fights, and this is, to me, striker versus grappler at its finest, and Romanov is going to find a way to get it to the ground, and he's going to win by submission in the first. I'm going with him to get it done. He beats Drago Volkov, and I think Romanov's a problem. At heavyweight, you look at Sorogan's grappling, nothing tells me Romanov couldn't get him to the ground either. 
Certain stylistic matchups like a Tibura ended up being a fucking nightmare. But Romanov's still young in the game. He's developing 32 at heavyweight, might as well be 25. Alexander Romanov win submission round number one. He beats the striker and Alexander Volkov in this one. And honestly, if you look through some of Volkov's Bellator losses, guys who could outgrapple him, and then the Tom Aspinall loss recently, a guy who can outgrapple him. Obviously, the Curtis Blades fight. I think Romanov's good to go here. He's getting it done. Win by submission, Alexander Romanov. First round. And I think the stock jumps through the roof. Let's get to the main event. If you guys haven't yet, make sure you smash that like button. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Keep it locked in right here at MMA Experts. And let's talk about this fight. Pyotr Jan, Marab Divashvili. I am picking Pyotr Jan to win. He has a string of bad luck right now. Lost to Aljamain Sterling where he was backpacked for a vast majority of that fight. And in the first fight... With Aljo, he was on his way to winning. Then he throws an illegal knee, gets DQ'd. Controversial decision loss to Sean O'Malley. Granted, O'Malley had a great performance in that fight. Controversial decision. Piotr Jan should have won. You look at this matchup. I think of Marab Divashvili versus Marlon Marais. Marab got hurt badly against the corpse of Marlon Marais because Marais was already on a terrible losing streak, and now he's getting knocked out against Shaman Marais in fucking PFL. Marab's last fight, he holds Jose Aldo against the cage for three rounds in a snooze fest. Marab, is he going to be able to control Piotr Jan for five rounds? Control position against the cage? It's not like Piotr Jan can't wrestle too. Don't get fooled with him losing to Aljo. Think, oh, Marab trains with him. He's a lock. He's going to win. Fuck no. Piotr Jan is going to touch him up with strikes and knock him out. I'm calling third round KO for Piotr Jan. His kickboxing is tremendous. He has A1 boxing skills. Great combos. Marab just has wrestling. He doesn't have submissions. He has control in the clinch or on the floor. I do not see a world where Piotr Jan is held down for five rounds and Marab beats him by a decision. I'd be shocked if Marab somehow submits him. Not going to happen. Marab might land a takedown or two or three even. Jan's going to get back up. Marab's going to be getting touched up with strikes. Marab's eventually going to be broken. Watch for those body kicks. Jan's body kicks are so quick. I think that Marab really struggles to catch him. And I do think Piotr Jan's getting his hand raised impressively. Picking apart Marab Diva Shavili with the stand-up. Fending off the great wrestling, and getting a knockout. Piotr Jan is back in contention with the win here, and Henry Cejudo is going to be shitting his pants because he knows he left the sport to dodge Jan, and Jan's coming. Jan's coming. I want to see that fight still. As you know, we got Cejudo versus Aljo. I think somehow that fight could happen down the line, and Piotr Jan's a scary matchup for Cejudo. Piotr Jan's winning here. He beats Marab Divashvili, and I think Marab needs to drop to 125. Marab's like, I won't fight the champ. Listen, that's fine, but if you want to become an all-time great, if you want to be the UFC champ, you got to fight who's the best. I know that's your boy, so let's drop you a weight class, and let's not keep fucking holding up the top of the division because you won't fight him. Doesn't matter now, though, because Piotr Jan's going to beat Marab Divashvili, sending him back anyways, and the only way he's going to be able to get a title shot is if it's at 125, which I think Marab might be able to make that weight cut. Let's see. But this fight here, Piotr Jan's picking him apart. Knockout win for Piotr Jan. Watch for body kicks, body punches, beautiful combos in close, and straight shots, too. I think Marab gets crumbled. Knockout win for Piotr Jan, and he's back on top with this one. Let's not forget about Piotr Jan, people. The odds are wide towards Jan. Minus 200. He deserves to be a 2-1 to one favorite. Marab Divashvili, plus 205. This is the Pyotr Jan show. He's getting a knockout win. He stops the grinding chain wrestling attack. And he gets a KO. I'm calling third round knockout. I think he beats Marab in that round. Marab getting dropped by Marlon, something that just keeps popping in my mind, as Piotr Jan will pick him apart. And Marab surviving to win against Aldo with a clinch fest. That's not going to save you against a guy as well-rounded as Jan, the former world champion and a great fighter. Piotr Jan gets the win. He beats Marab, and he's back in contention. UFC Vegas 71 is bringing the heat. It's also not at the Apex, just so you guys know. It's at the Theater at Virgin Hotels, which is a small venue. So it's going to feel like we're back in 2008 with the UFC doing a, you know, a small venue event. I believe it's going to be the small cage as well, the 25-foot octagon. Doesn't matter here for this main event. Jan's going to find Marab and flatline him. I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. Make sure you smash the like button if you haven't. And if you're new, subscribe. Definitely let me know what you think of my main event prediction. Do you think Marab controls Piotr Jan for five rounds and gets that decision? I appreciate everybody for tuning into the show. 
Definitely show some love in the comments. If you got nothing to say, but you just want to support me, drop a W in the chat. I appreciate the continued support from my people. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.